Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, HTM here. Welcome to The Elder Scrolls Online in 2024, and it's time for some patch notes. We are taking a look at update 41. This just dropped on the public test server, and even though the devs kind of talked previously about this year not being huge in terms of combat updates, guess what? We got a ton of combat updates in this patch. Almost every class, in fact, got some major changes to abilities and gameplay options. Only one class actually got nerfed. I'll let you make your guesses right now as to which class that is. But let's go ahead and jump into some patch notes. I will have timestamps down below, by the way, if you need to skip to a section or a specific class. But let's go ahead and get started here right now. So I'm just going to quickly explain the overview here in terms of the goals of this patch, at least the way the developers describe it. So they said our goals for this update is going to be improving the experience of status effects. Then they're going to actually make some changes to damage shields, making them more interactive with the major and minor buff system. It's pretty interesting. They're also going to have some updates for taunt, both for visibility and readability, and then targeting some underloved play styles and abilities with shakeups to their functionality. And this is specifically talking about class skills which we'll get to in just a second. Let's jump right into the notes here in the general section for combat and abilities, and let's talk about taunt. So, so there will be some new changes to how taunt works in ESO. Basically, the goal is to improve its readability in combat, basically making it more obvious while also making it harder to enter taunt immunity. That's the stage when an enemy can no longer be taunted. So now when you taunt an enemy, an additional debuff is going to appear and show how many times a target has been taunted by another source rather than being hidden. Note that taunt only generates a stack beyond the one initial stack when a target who is not the original taunt applier uses a taunt on an enemy. So basically, multiple people trying to taunt the same target. Now they reduce the duration of the taunt stack counter to 7 seconds, down to 12 seconds, so it's going to fall off sooner with multiple casters, that's probably a good thing. Taunt immunity now lasts for 7 seconds rather than 12.3. So it's going to align with the duration of the stat counter, hopefully making it a little bit easier. Taunt immunity flushes previous taunts from the debuff tray. And taunt immunity now has a very distinct visual effect and displays an additional icon on the enemy to explain that the target is basically taunt immune. Lots of changes to taunt. So the developer comment says, We're continuing to try and aid visibility and understanding. From one of the most hidden but important mechanics for tanks to know by adding additional player visible fields with taunt. So there you go. Now the other general change, very big in fact for ESO, is going to be the update to status effects. This is also coming with update 41. So the goal here is basically to make every status effect viable instead of just, you know, the damage over time focused effects like burning, poison, and hemorrhaging. Those effects will still be strong, but they've significantly increased the damage that the other status effects deal, like concussed or disease. So let's look at each of these one by one and see how they're being updated. Starting with burning, so they reduced the damage of the status effect by just 6%, and this is going to be the baseline for all other status effects. Then the chill status effect, they increase the damage by 106%, so essentially doubling the damage of chill. Concussed also got a similar bonus to its damage. It also deals an additional 15% damage to targets that have recently been concussed. So basically, the more frequently you can apply this status effect, the more bonus damage you'll get. That's pretty interesting. Disease got a buff by 88% and now deals additional damage in a 6 meter radius. So Disease is now an AoE status effect, applies minor defile to all enemies nearby, that reduces their healing done. Pretty interesting update for that one as well. Uh, hemorrhaging is very powerful in ESO, so I'm not surprised that this actually got reduced out of all of these. The damage is uh, down 58% per tick, but on the plus side, it can now stack up to three times, increasing its damage by 100% per stack. So this is going to result in an overall damage increase, about 25%, if you get to the max three stacks compared to before. So keep that in mind. It also no longer applies the minor mangle debuff. Overcharge, they increase the damage of this one again by 106%. It also instantly restores 65 magicka. Poison, they did reduce this by 30% per tick, but this one is really interesting. Uh, they reduce the duration to four seconds but the damage is now execute damage, and it deals 
up to 100% bonus damage to targets under 100% health. That is really cool. It goes with the poison theme. I actually love that change for the poison status effect. And finally, uh, Sundered, they increase the damage of this effect by 106% again. It also grants you 100 weapon and spell damage for four seconds. So tons of changes to status effects. Let's get some more uh, info from the developer comment. So they say for too long, the status effects of burning, poisoned, and hemorrhaging were supreme. So they're trying to align the power of status effects and improve the flavor of each of them. And they have differences that now give them each their own purpose and edge. So a huge update in terms of status effects. Really interesting to see those become a lot more prominent in ESO. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below this video. But we also have to talk about buffs and debuffs. A couple of really big changes here especially for those who enjoy damage shield builds. I myself am a damage shield enjoyer, so let's see here. Major and minor vitality. They updated these buffs to increase healing received and damage shield strength by up to 12%, rather than just healing received by 16. So the developer comment here says, we're opening vitality to influence damage shield effectiveness in hopes to differentiate the buff types from mending, which is just healing done. So they lowered the potency slightly as we saw, but it's doubling up its healing and damage shields. So very cool uh, way to improve damage shields in that case. But also check out the major and minor defile update here. They updated these buffs to decrease healing received and damage shield strength again by up to 12%. So specifically for PVP, I'm sure uh, these are not really applicable to PVE environments. Uh, but also the comment here is interesting. Additionally, they're removing the health recovery penalty from these debuffs as Battle Spirit already applies a hefty reduction to the stat. So just something to keep in mind there. So those were the main general changes, taunt and uh, status effects, as well as major and minor buffs. Now it's time to get into some class balance changes. Uh, like I saw, tons of really great changes for the classes of ESO overall. Unfortunately, one class did not escape the uh, nerf bat, let's say, uh, and that is the Arcanist. I would say this probably is not unexpected, and it's just one skill really in particular that we need to talk about, and that is Fate Carver. Uh, so the Fate Carver got its damage reduced uh, on its morphs by 7% damage per tick, and Pragmatic Fate Carver, which is really good for solo content, they reduce the potency of the damage shield by about 16%, and they also capped the damage shield. Now, it seems like this didn't have a cap initially, uh, and so you could get your Fate Carver shield really, really high, as I think that was just based on your, you know, weapon and spell damage, your damage potential, but now it's going to have a cap of 15% of your max health for the Fate Carver shield. So they talk about it a little bit. It's not a huge nerf, but I think it will be noticeable uh, if you are playing the Arcanist. Especially in solo content, that shield is just not going to last for very long anymore. So you're probably going to have to supplement that in other ways. Maybe, uh, you know, using the damage shield buff that we saw right here. Major and minor vitality. That would be a way to kind of make up for that damage shield reduction with Fate Carver. Uh, other than that, Psychic Lesion, they reduced the passives. Chance to apply status effects to 55%, down from 75% uh, to make up for the status effect buffs in this update. We'll see that across the board. Generally, they, they're trying to lower the chance to proc status effects because they are so much more powerful in update 41. But this is not a huge difference. I don't think you'll notice that. They did increase the radius of Imperfect Ring to 6 meters, up from 5 and then just some bug fixes with Apocryphal Gate and Arcanist Domain. So that's it for the Arcanist. Again, the big change there, Fate Carver Beam, reduced damage, reduced damage shield size. Let me know what you think about those changes in the comments. But let's talk about Dragon Knight here. Uh, in the Ardent Flame skill line, bit of a change to the Combustion passive. And this is actually a buff. It makes it a lot easier to use. So Combustion now increases your damage done with Burning and Poisoned by up to 40%. That's really strong buff, especially with that new poison to execute damage. That's going to be really strong. Uh, and it also now grants you 1,000 Magicka in stamina whenever you apply burning or poisoned, rather than just granting Magicka for burning and stamina for poison. So you get both resources at once. 1,000 magic, 1,000 stamina. That's, that's pretty good. So the note says they were trying to get rid of some restrictive morph engagement with the Dragonite. 
So depending on your build, you'd have to you know think about how this passive worked. It should now be much simpler to understand and use overall. So I agree with that. Good change there for the Dragonite. Gulfing Flame, they sort of changed how the scaling works here. So it now scales off your highest offensive stats rather than just weapon and spell damage. So it will make the maximum value harder to reach for non-damage dealers, tanks, for example, while remaining relatively unchanged for most damage-oriented builds. Keep that in mind. And then just a couple fixes for Dragon Leap and Molten Weapons. Now let's talk about Necromancer next. This is actually a pretty big surprise to me. A major rework of the main Necromancer skill in ESO Blast Bones. And I actually really like how they did this. So let's sort of break it down. So Blast Bones is the base skill. They reworked this ability and stalking Blast Bones, which is the Magicomorph. So the base skill is now called Sacrificial Bones. And what it does, along with the stalking Blast Bones morph, it now summons a skeleton to buff you. So basically the skeleton, instead of jumping to the target, will sort of explode around you, infusing you with power for 10 seconds for the base morph, increasing your damage done with Grave Lord skills and damage over time effects by 15%. This is a very nice damage buff, especially, you know, when you consider this would buff that Colossus from the Grave Lord Ultimate, plus any additional damage over time effects. They don't have to be class skills and it no longer requires a target to activate. So it's basically a buff. You have to be in combat to make use of this. Uh, now the Stalking Blast Bones morphs builds on that. It's called Grave Lord Sacrifice now, and it's going to extend the duration to 20 seconds. So basic, you know, full buff duration, increasing your damage done by 20%. Again, Grave Lord skills and dots, and allows your next corpse consuming ability to treat you as a corpse while the effect is active. So that is pretty interesting. I do like how they've really changed it up where one morph is now completely different than the other one. As far as Blighted Blast Bones, the Stamina Morph, basically the same. All they did was reduce the cost a little bit. So if you like, you know, that burst damage, every three seconds clicking Blast Bones playstyle, you can still do that with Blighted Blast Bones, but now you have this new option for stalking Blast Bones. Really cool idea. They basically just sort of explain that process with a developer comment. So I do like how they did this. I mean, before there wasn't a huge difference with the morphs. Uh, the, the morph effect actually on stalking was really not that useful. So they kind of turned this dead morph into something brand new, which is pretty cool in my opinion. More buffs as well. Uh, death Knell here, the crit chance passive. This is now 10% per ability slotted instead of 8% and uh, just fix an issue with Shocking Siphon, and then Animate Blast Bones. Because of that Blast Bones change, it now only spawns the Blighted Blast Bone uh, instead of the Magicomorph. So yeah, pretty cool changes overall for the Necromancer class. I do like that. Switching gears now to the Nightblade class, Assassination and Incap Strike. This is actually a huge buff for Nightblade, so check this one out. Increase the damage done by the enhanced version of this ultimate by 10%. Uh, so I think you need like 110 or 120 ultimate to cast this. But if you get it there, you get 10% bonus damage. Plus you extend the duration, 12 seconds up from eight. So a full four seconds longer for this buff and it's 10% stronger. That's pretty amazing. Uh, they did actually remove Reeve, which was just a little bit of extra magic and stamina. I don't think you're going to notice that. And then uh, Soul Harvest, this morph slotted bonus now persists through the bar swap. So you have a good reason to use Soul Harvest as well. If you're really farming ultimate on a build for some reason, you're now gonna generate that ult no matter where this uh, ultimate is on your skill bar, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, they just kind of wanted to differentiate these different play styles. I think that's very good. Concealed Weapon, they actually simplified this a lot as well. This skill has been through tons of changes the past three to four patches, I would say. Now we have a much simpler version, which I like as well. Uh, so Concealed Weapon now deals 10% increased damage at all times and an additional 10% damage for 15 seconds after leaving Stealth or Invisibility. You no longer have the major Berserk buff that you need to manage, you know, recasting this every 10 seconds, even if you're not using this skill. Kind of difficult and confusing. Uh, this should be much simpler. So I do like that as well. Cripple got reworked as well. The debilitate morph now increases the chance of applying overcharged 
uh, by 15% rather than guaranteeing its application each tick. So that may sound sort of like a nerf, uh, but remember overcharge is doing a lot more damage. This patch, and then the 15% is just the base effect to uh, the base percentage to get that effect, right? You're still going to get a lot more chance from things like champion points, destruction staff passives. So this should still uh, proc overcharge fairly often, and it's now doing a ton more damage. And then finally, siphoning strikes for the Nightblade. I do really like this change as well. They reworked this ability pretty much. They made it kind of more similar to Sorcerer Dark Deal, and let's see why. So when activated, the ability will instantly drain 4,000 health and restore... 2,000 Magicka and Stamina. That's the base morph, okay? And then also, when the ability is slotted on either bar, any damage you deal is going to heal you for 1250 health once every second. So that's not just light attack damage. That's the big difference there. Any damage. It could be just a damage over time that you apply. It could still be a light attack, a heavy attack, AoE, single target damage. You're going to get that consistent 1250 healing every second, which is great. And then the morphs increase that even more. So Leeching Strikes now increases the passive healing to 1,800. Uh, then the cost of your next Leeching Strikes is reduced by 10%, stacking 10 times. Basically, I guess it will be free. Uh, if you reach 10 stacks, you can just click it again, consume it, and get those resources back for free. That's pretty cool. And then the Siphoning Attacks morph. Now increases the resources restored to 2,600 Magicka and Stamina. And it also restores 200 Magicka and Stamina each time you heal. So basically once per second if you can keep up your damage. But that is awesome as well. So really good buffs I think for the Nightblade class. Simplifying things. Making the gameplay a lot easier. Not so dependent on light attacks for siphoning attacks and that buff specifically. So I do like that change. A Sorcerer, surprisingly, did actually get some buffs this patch as well. Long time coming, I think. Starting with NK, so this comes from the Dark Magic skill line. This is your basic immobilize ability. It's now going to apply Major Maim to enemies for 10 seconds, in addition to the Root, so that's a nice buff for tanks. They reduce the cost as well, down to 4,050. And then some changes with the morphs as well. So Restraining Prison is now Vibrant Shroud, and this ability is actually a heal. So it heals allies in the area with the same healing potency of Blessing of Protection. So not a huge heal, but it's still going to apply Major Maim in the area and also apply Minor Vitality to allies in the area as well. Remember that now buffs damage shields as well. That's going to synergize really nice with some of the other changes that we're going to see on the uh, Sorcerer coming up. And then the Shattered Prison Morph is now called Shattering Spines. And this is still the damage and immobilization morph. They actually increase the damage done uh, by 10%. So there you go. Some really interesting changes to that skill. And then in Daedric Summoning, this is a very cool change as well. Conjured Ward, so your main damage shield on the Sorcerer. This ability and the Hardened Ward morph will now heal you for 15% of your max health or max magicka, whichever is higher, if no pence are shielded by the ability. So... Throwing a bone here to the non-pet Sork users out there. Basically, if you use this skill with a pet, you know, it shields your pet at the same time. So it's kind of more efe efficient. Uh, so giving you something back now, if you don't use the pet, you now get a little heal uh, instead of the pet shield. Pretty cool way to update this skill, I think. And then the other morph here, Regenerative Ward, now also heals you for 10% of your max health or magicka, regardless if a pet is affected or not. Now, that is a pretty cool change. Uh, we can see that they want to aid the Lone Wolf Sorcerer here. Again, talking about non-pet builds specifically. I think this will be a super nice play style, especially when combined with the, you know, the passive healing that you get from Critical Surge on a solo build. You should be, like, really good to go on health and shielding at the same time. But that is not all. For more of the group focus builds... Check out this change to Daedric Mines. This is now called Daedric Refuge. The Mines now places wards that activate when you or an ally walk over them, granting a damage shield for six seconds rather than dealing damage and immobilizing. So that is a really cool change to this ability as well. Now, allies cannot be affected by 
one of the wards more than once every two seconds. So you can't, you know, just step over them and boom, 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 they all go off and stack. That's not how it works. You can kind of time it out, though, I would think. So even as a solo player, you know, if you just sort of walk in a circle slowly, uh, you're going to get, you know, all of your shields. You'll get those all eventually. Uh, and it does, again, use the higher of your max magicka or stamina and is capped at 43% of your max health. So really cool interaction there. Obviously, the, the damage morph of mines is still there. You can still use that just fine. But now there's something completely different you can do. You know, if you're playing a healer, a damage shield focus build, really nice option. And then uh, Expert Summoner, I like this change as well. And now increases your max health by 10% if you have a pet of any kind. And it also increases your max magicka and stamina by 10% while you do not have a pet. So you got the option there. Either way, you're going to get a bonus, which is pretty nice. Uh, Storm Calling, Lightning Splash did get a buff in its AoE size. That's a nice change as well. And let's talk about the Warden class. Some interesting changes here also. So Glacial Presence, they reduce the potency of this passive by 50%. As we saw, the Chilled Status effect received a buff overall. Should still be a buff in total. And then some changes to the ultimate here. Sleet Storm, the Northern Storm morph looks pretty powerful. They increased the damage done by this morph by 50%. Activating the ultimate now grants 50 weapon and spell damage for 5 seconds each tick, up to a maximum of 9 times, so a total of 450 weapon and spell damage. So a little bit more impactful, shorter duration obviously, but more weapon and spell damage, uh, plus the increased damage done is pretty nice. And then the permafrost morph, they did sort of switch this up as well, they actually reduced the damage done by 32% to make up for the adjustments to Shield and Glacial Presence. So you'll have slightly less damage overall, but again, this is the defensive morph, so that does make sense. But that is it for Wardens. We did have a few changes for Inner Fire, that is the Undaunted Taunt skill. They did re redesign this quite a bit, so they reduced the cost of this ability and the Inner Rage morph down to 1620. That is a nice cost reduction. They did reduce the damage of the ability, but also adjusted the damage type to flame damage rather than magic damage. But probably the best update here is that the Radiate Synergy is now guaranteed, uh, and it no longer has a minimum range of 12 to activate the Synergy. So that's very nice as well. And then in terms of the Inner Beast morph, they did increase the damage by 80%, making it equal to other range spammable attacks. That is really interesting as well. Especially with this second part here, the morph now applies minor vulnerability and minor maim to the target rather than a unique damage taken buff for the uh, caster or basically debuff for the target. And then Inner Rage, the other morph, allows up to three allies to activate that Radiate Synergy. So a little bit different there as well. Now, if you noticed, uh, we did skip one class. There were zero updates for the Templar class this patch. Now, I don't know... If maybe those were just late, maybe we'll see some Templar updates next week. Or maybe they just think the Templar class is perfect. Who knows? Uh, but we did see tons of changes to the other six classes. So definitely let me know what you think uh, down in the comment section below. How'd your favorite class turn out? Were these good updates, bad updates? As always, make sure you're subscribed right here to HTM. We will have tons more updates uh, this week and following as we track the PTS changes for ESO. Many thanks again for watching, and I will see you around in the next video.